Pod Studios. This is Talkin' Rock. Talkin' Rock. Your backstage pass to some of your favorite rock artists. Here's your host, Meltdown. Back at it again, this time around with Eric Bloom from Blue Oyster Cult. Uh, the, the boys from Blue Oyster Cult playing the Royal Oak Music Theater coming up on February 25th. That's a, a Sunday night show right here in Detroit. We talk about a lot of things here in this conversation, and it's kind of funny because I don't think I've ever talked with Eric Bloom before. This is a first. I thought I had in the past, but as I was talking to him, I'm like, no, I've never talked to him before. I found out he's a big video gamer. Maybe diehard fans of BOC already know this stuff, but I didn't think I'd be talking to a 79-year-old rocker and start talking about video games. We talk about the uh, Black and Blue Tour with Black Sabbath back in the early 80s. That was interesting. Plus, use of Blue Oyster Cult's music in movies. There was one movie that they didn't even know they were in. We talk about that, uh, what they've got going on this year. Not only concerts, but dropping live vinyl albums, as well as some stuff for some diehard fans. How about demo tracks and songs that never made it? Yeah, they're putting together a package for that as well. Uh, We talked about the, the band Ghost, Metallica, Spinal Tap, and a ton more. This one just on phone. Uh, most interviews I do lately have been on Zoom, uh, but still great conversation with uh, Eric Bloom from Blue Oyster Cult. And it starts now. Hey, glad to be uh, online with you. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Royal Oak Music Theater coming up on uh, February 25th. That's a uh, Sunday night. You still get a kick out of touring and playing all these these places, huh? Well, we've been uh, here, there, and everywhere in the last 50 years. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet. Is there any place that you haven't played? Um, we've played all 50 states more than once. Um, we've played, uh, the Alaska State Fair. Um, we've played, um, Honolulu. We've, we've been everywhere just about. We've played Guam. Um, you know, just, just about every place that uh, has a USA sticker on it. Yeah. I was thinking about this earlier. I threw a, a BOC record on the turntable, and I don't know. I was just, I just walked up to it, and, and I think I was a little bit too young at the time. But you toured with Black Sabbath back in the day as the uh, the Black and Blue Tour. Is that correct? Yeah, that was uh, 80, 81 or so, right around then. Yeah. What do, what do you recall about uh, that tour? Well, uh did tremendous amount of business. Um, and um, it, it was that, uh, for your listeners who uh, might be young, that's when Ronnie James Dio was the lead singer of Black Sabbath. And they did a couple of albums. So the most prominent one was called Heaven and Hell. Yeah, that was uh, that was a tour just a little bit before my time. But that's just one of those tours. If I could go back, I would have liked to have seen that. Yeah, it, it, uh, it was fun. It was... Um, Different nights we would close and other nights they would close, depending on what the uh, promoter thought uh, was bigger in that market. And uh, sort of pissed Black Sabbath off off a little bit (laughs) because they thought they were they were a bigger band everywhere. But it was it was uh, it was okay. We all got along and um, we did uh, Madison Square Garden. We did, you know, all the the biggest uh, venues across the USA. Yeah, it's funny you say that, that, you know, because at that time, uh, Black Sabbath was kind of rebuilding. So it's not like they were at, the, you know, I'm I'm not exactly sure where they were as far as the peak of their career. But, uh, yeah, they weren't they weren't the Black Sabbath that they had with Ozzy. They just kind of start all over. Well, it was a different thing because Ozzy had left. Yeah. And and a matter of fact, we did a, a, a big concert on Day on the Green uh, that when Bill Graham was alive. Uh, for your listeners, he was a major uh, rock and roll promoter in uh, San Francisco and New York. And uh, Dan the Green was a gigantic uh, baseball stadium show that he ran, um, usually in Oakland or in San Francisco. And um, Ozzy um, was almost like an opening act after he left uh, Black Sabbath. And um, came out on his own and got gigantic again. So um, it was um, very different around 1980-81. Yeah. Just talking to you, I'm thinking back to some of the uh, stuff, you know, Blue Oyster Cult, uh, as far as the as far as far the cultural impact, of course, you got the cowbell thing and, and that, that scene, and I think it was Dazed and Confused or something. You guys have uh, really uh, put your stamp out there as far as uh, some of the cultural impact, haven't you? Well, of course, a lot of that had nothing to do with us. People just used it, right. uh, like um, Stephen King's The Stand. You know, they used "Don't Fear the Reaper" in the beginning of the of the movie, and uh, it's in uh, Stephen King also used the lyric in the uh, preface of the book, mm-hmm. and and um, 
uh, Burning for You was in um, a couple of movies, and um, the Veteran of the Psychic Wars was in um, um, the heavy metal animated movie. And a lot of our songs are, are been used in, in different. Oh, uh, uh, Don't Fear the Reaper was in the original Halloween movie. Um, so a lot of our songs have been taken and used in, in different places. Yeah, what do you think when you uh, first of all they, they they obviously ask you if you can use them, and then do you get to see the movies before they uh, before they hit the the, the theaters? Uh, no, and a matter of fact, there is a little was a little controversy. A matter of fact, um, because Sony Records, um, which is our, our label, well, actually originally it was Columbia Records, and Sony bought them out. Um, gave permission to. Um, um, the Halloween movie for the use of Don't Fear the Reaper without asking us. Mm. And, and uh, so a friend of ours saw the movie in the theater and saw the scene in the original Halloween movie with Jamie Lee Curtis when their two girls are riding in the car and turn on the radio and Don't Fear the Reaper is playing as they pull up to the creepy house. Yeah. And, and, um, um, told us, by the way, you know, did you guys know that your song was in that movie? And we did not. So um, we found out about it sort of the hard way. And uh, then, of course, there was some renegotiation. <laughs> there you go. Now, um, I don't know, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Godzilla's never been used in a, in a, in a movie, has it? Uh, only in the, I can't remember. The, it was, it's not in the current one, which is a Japanese movie. Right. But the either the last one or the one before, was used in the credits, but not our version. The song was used, but it was re-recorded in a different version over the credits. Interesting. So I'm not a, I'm not a Godzilla fan. You know, I mean, I, I guess I'm a kind of a fan, but I'm not, not like a Godzilla junkie or nothing. But I went and saw that movie last year, and it was awesome. <laughs> uh, the, the current one, the Godzilla Man of Zero. Yeah, it was great. It was a fantastic movie. Yeah, I. I I don't. I don't think I've seen every Godzilla movie because there's probably about twenty five of them. Right. But but I've seen most of them. Some of them are a little silly, uh, like in the eighties, seventies, and eighties. They got a little silly, but uh, like Godzilla versus the Smog Monster and stuff like that. You know, a little 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 silly. But um, there was um, the ones with the guy in the suit. You know, some of them are a little little um, ridiculous. <laughs> But the original Godzilla movie, the one that was in black and white with Raymond Burr inserted into it, the original Godzilla film, um, is is a real hoot to watch because I don't want to go on and on because I could, but <laughs> but but um, the original Godzilla movie was called Godzilla, uh, and it was a Japanese movie, and it, um, the uh, American filmmakers decided to bring it to the United States, dub it and add an American actor to it who was Raymond Burr. And Raymond Burr, if you're not old enough, he played Ironside on television. <laughs> yeah. Uh, remember the detective who was bound to a wheelchair? Yep. Um, so he was inserted into the movie, I think, a year or two after the Japanese movie was made. So they put him in different scenes and made film different scenes with him in it, and then cut and spliced it into the <laughs> Japanese film. So if you're ever watching the original Godzilla movie, all the scenes with Raymond Burr in it were cut into the original Japanese movie. And if you watch it carefully, it's a different film stock, and and the grain of the film is different. It's really very funny to watch. That's uh, um, yeah, that's interesting. I never I never heard that before. Were, were you guys big Godzilla fans of how that song came about? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's how the song came about, because, I mean, Buck wrote the song, but we used to make jokes about Godzilla and stuff, and, you know, in our band house. We all used to live in one house when the band first started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad you saw the, the current one, because I wasn't sure if you would have seen it, but I saw it near the end of the year, and I thought it was predictable and kind of uh, cliche, but I thought it was really well done, and I, I just I just loved it. It was one of my favorite movies of the year. Um, I'm surprised it's not up for best foreign film, uh, uh, as, as far as the Oscars go, but it's, it is up for, it's the first Godzilla movie ever to be nominated for any Academy Award, and it's up in there for special effects. Yeah. Well, the special effects were fantastic. You know, speaking of that song, my brother brought this up to me years ago. My brother's a guitar player, and you've probably heard this before, but, um, the, 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 the chord progression on Godzilla is the same as Smells Like Teen Spirit, isn't it? 
I could not answer that. Oh, from Nirvana, that you, you know the big huge you, song. You would, you would, uh, <laughs> in a way, I, I hear what you mean. Yeah. But but um, you'd have to ask Buck that he wrote it. Okay, I got you. Yeah. So you were talking before we got in the air. But, that- I mean, Godzilla Godzilla came first. Oh, of course it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no doubt. Um, so we were talking before we started that uh, you guys got some product that you're, that you're going to be looking to sell here in 2024. What do you, what do you got going on? Uh, we got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, first of all, um, we are uh, looking forward to some uh, Detroit pizza when we get there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, um, you know, um, what's the venue we're playing? You're playing the Royal Oak Music Theater. It's been around for uh, quite a while. Yeah, so we're going to be there in uh, late Feb, Feb 25, I think. Yep, that's it, yep. So uh, we're looking forward to that. And uh, we always like playing that town. It's a really great uh, rock and roll town. And um, we played three shows last fall at a theater in Manhattan called uh, the Sony Theater, which is a nice intimate uh I don't recall how many seats, but, uh, you know, I don't know, like 600 seats or something like that. And um, it was sold out all three nights. And um, the idea uh, that we set forward for for fans was you you don't want to miss this. We're going to play the first album the first night, the second album the third night, second night. Mm -hmm. And on the third night, we play our third album in its entirety. And then for a a short break and then um, a deep tracks set um the uh, second set each night and each night the second set would be different mm-hmm. so uh, people flew in from all over the world for those three shows all sh- all shows uh th- sold out in advance and um people came from the UK and France and all over the place for these three shows so um on December 8th um the first night was um f- for sale both in um, Blu-ray, you know, in CD and all the usual suspects and vinyl. And then the second night is going to be for sale soon. And the third night will be for sale a little after that um, uh, this year. And then we're going to have a mystery project coming out later this year. Mm. uh, Before the summer, Um, it's going to be some um, unreleased VOC tracks from our past. Really? Yes. S- some stuff you found in the vault. That's exactly correct. Wow. So so you have a bunch of stuff, and you guys were just kind of looking through things, and you rediscover this, or did you always know they were there? Well, uh, our, our sound man from way in the back in the past was running tape when we were rehearsing for previous albums. Mm-hmm. So these are some songs that were rediscovered and uh, been uh, remixed and remastered. And uh, we'll be coming out, um, I think, before the summer of 24. Wow, that's a pretty cool thing for uh, uh, any Blue Oyster Cult fan out there. Yes, I think uh, the hardcore fans will certainly enjoy it because it has all the original members. Oh, no kidding. So so how come uh, some of these songs didn't make the cut? Just uh, too, too many songs, just for whatever reason? Well, you know, I don't recall the exact reasons, but um, some stuff was added present day. Mm-hmm. to fin- finish them up maybe they you know didn't have a lead guitar on them or they just uh, weren't ready at the time so stuff has been spiffed up a little bit gotcha so that will be that'll be i don't know exactly have it in front of me when this will be released but that will be happening uh later in 24 now uh your last record came out in 2020 and uh are you guys yeah. working on any any new stuff or no Currently, no. Yeah. Um, doesn't mean it's impossible, but um, that was an interesting project. Uh, the Symbol Remains is the name of that album on Frontiers Records. It did pretty well, considering um, during that time was, yeah. uh, you know, a, a dead time for a lot of things. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we read all the reviews, and a lot of people thought it was the best rock record of 2020. Um, uh, and we... We were pretty proud of that record. Um, it's our first record in 20 years when we put it out. And uh, a lot of good tracks are on there. And uh, there's three videos out that people can find on YouTube um, for that record. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was a, a weird time, uh, not only in the music business, but in the world as well. You know, I was uh, I was talking with uh, David Ellison the other day from uh, a couple weeks ago. From uh, uh, He was in Megadeth and whatnot. And uh, we started talking about the band Ghost. And... 
he brought up that his uh, guitar player, Jeff Young, who was in the band uh, years earlier, he said, and I quote him, they sound like BOC. Are you familiar with Ghost? I am familiar with them, and I've heard that comparison. Um, I, I don't sort of get it, but I maybe other people might think so. Um, they, I know they're popular. Yeah, I don't really get that myself either. They're they're like an amalgamation of a lot of things, and I I, I don't think BOC ever crossed into my mind with listening to that band. But do you keep up on some of the uh, newer rock bands? Oh well, yeah, certainly. I mean, not not. Not a lot, you know, but I I do listen to Octane in my car. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm familiar with uh, some of the, and and I have a a son who's in his 40s, and that's, he listens to all that uh, Cookie Monster vocal uh, bands. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not into into that kind of stuff. I'm probably sure. I'm guessing you're not either. (laughs) Not really, but, but, uh, you know, if I'm riding in, in a car with him, that's what he has on. Mm-hmm. So I, I said, what's that guy saying? <laughs> you know, I can't make out what the, what's the lyric in this song. And he can decipher it, so more, more power to him. Well, as a musician, you could probably appreciate most of the stuff that even if you don't like it, right? Well, you know, it's funny you say that because I'm sitting here in the den of my house and um, and um, TV is on the wall. And the other, I'm a big video gamer. And, and uh, so late night, I might be in a video game. And um, so I usually leave the TV on something so so I can look up from the game and look at something on television. The other night, I just happened to park onto MTV, which had a lot of videos on. And I didn't know MTV still showed videos. <laughs> right. So, so, and it was pop. It was all pop. And I was very surprised what I was looking at because it was all, not all, I saw some Taylor Swift, which was kind of educational. And I saw some, but what surprised me was two or three different Asian girl pop bands, Hmm. which were like boy bands, but girls. Mm -hmm. And they were all Korean. And uh, like five beautiful Korean girls dancing, um, you know, and singing. But of course it was all lip sync, but it was... It was. Um, I said, "Is this what's going on?" I said, yeah. "I, I said, I said, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't know what's going on. You know, I, I, I know that uh, I saw a pie chart the other day that you know I, I found on um, Facebook, just cruising through Facebook one day, and and it showed a pie chart of what is selling, and it was about sixty uh, percent pop, five percent rock, and and the rest was hip hop and and um, and R&B and this and that. Uh, but uh, I understand, you know, pop music is what sells. And, um, you know, very little rock anymore. And, um, you know, I'm I'm I'm, a, I'm an old guy, and I don't expect rock to be selling anymore. <laughs> um, but people do come and see rock acts, that's for sure. Yeah, especially here in the uh, Midwest. You know, you, you bring up, you're, you're, you're a video gamer. That's like that's like kind of the last thing I thought I'd hear you say in this, this conversation. What kind of video games oh, no, do you play? Oh, no, my whole life, my whole life I've been uh, pinball and video games and, and, you know, quite a bit. I didn't yeah. know that. So what, 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 kind of, what kind of games do you play? Do you play like first-person games, shoot-em-up games, uh, sports games? What do you play? I, I don't play sports games. That, that's... Um... Never been my thing. I used to play MMOs. I played WoW for years. Um, I'm currently playing, um, let's see, sometimes I forget, uh, Return of Shadow. I'm playing that. And I'm playing uh, Starfleet Command. No Star, kidding. Star Trek Fleet Command. <laughs> no kidding. I didn't realize and, that. Wow. Uh, yeah. Wow, that's uh, that's really interesting. And yeah. I'm playing uh, Diablo Immortal. Okay. Wow, I'll have to check it out. I'll, I'll have to ask my son about those. He's always up all night playing all sorts of games, so I don't know. Yeah, well, I'm like a, I'm like a 12-year-old. I'm never going to change. <laughs> you know. Hey, uh, real fast, I just thinking about this as I was talking to you. You lived through the uh, days of the Spinal Tap and stuff, and Spinal Tap's coming out with a new movie, I, I think maybe even. I saw that. I, I, I'm praying it's good. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly, because the first one is so good. I don't I don't know if they should put out another one. That's That's my opinion. I don't know. Well, sometimes you got to leave it alone. Right. You know, sometimes they remake stuff and it's it's just can't be as good, you know. But uh, they're very smart guys, so so I imagine it'll, it'll be good. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, movies that come out like this, you know, de- years or decades after the original tend not to do very well as, as far as I know, like Dumb and Dumber and stuff like that. But uh, um, when you watched that movie for the first time, could you see your band in it? Well, I saw a lot of bands in it because, you know, they're bands of a certain era. So there's a, l- a little BOC in it. There's a, a, a lot of Uriah Heep in it. Yeah. Uh, there, there's, um, a, you know, just a lot of bands. In. And believe me, every time, we, you know, we're ever in the theater and we're, the dressing room is in the basement, we walk <laughs> towards the stage, yelling, Cleveland! <laughs> yeah. I, I think if I'm not, mis- if I'm not mistaken, what, uh, the scene with the, uh, where they, where they built that little tiny, um, st- uh, Stonehenge, wasn't that taken yeah. from a Black Sabbath? Something happened with a Black Sabbath show where they, they, yeah, well, there's some Black Sabbath in there, too. Yeah. They, you know, it's a mishmash of, you know, all the uh, metal bands of the era. And there's, you know, that it's funny because when that movie came out and it finally came out on DVD shortly thereafter, you know, I bought it. And I had a friend of mine who was, a, you know, a straight guy and a, a, an attorney friend of mine. So I called him over. I said, you got to watch this movie because he would never have gone to the theater. <laughs> and uh, so I, he watched it and I said, well, what do you think? And he says, oh, I thought it was sad. <laughs> Uh, man, you you must have Spinal Tap moments for hours. I'm sure, right? Oh yeah, it's it's it's, it's so real that it's that it's scary, you know. But yet, it's down as one of the top ten funniest movies ever made. So it's it's got a, a lot of truth to it. Yet, if you you know read the articles about it, they had lived ninety uh, percent of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, so they must have lived it and learned how to play good enough to. To write the songs and and get by, so it's it's really good. I actually have the uh, vinyl copy of Spinal Tap "Smell the Glove" at my house from when I was a kid. It's it's a little beat up, but still very playable, and uh, I throw it on every now and then. Well, our um, second guitar player, Richie Castellano, who's a brilliant guy, he um, he actually has a house band called the Band Geeks, and uh, for all you listeners out there. Um, on whatever medium you're listening on to this piece right now, um, go to RichieCastellano.com and you'll hear or or, or his video channel, uh, which is the Band Geeks, and and uh, he actually did a whole redo of uh, and a, a, and a live performance of all the songs from uh, from a Spinal Tap and. Uh, just did a tremendous job on it, and they dressed up like that, and everything is very <laughs> just a very funny project that he did. He gets gets a, like a bee in his bonnet about stuff he ought to have the band geeks do. So um, that's one of the little projects he did. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Well, Eric, it's been a great talking to you. Royal Oak Music Theater coming up on uh, February 25th. I just did a, a thing about every show Metallica has ever played here, and, and that was the first place Metallica ever played here in 1985. Oh, great! Well, I'm a huge fan of theirs. And they've covered us a couple of times. That's right, they have. Yeah, you, yeah. That I, I forgot all about that. Yeah, that must have been quite an honor. Was well, they um, they covered astronomy on one of their albums, and then they covered one of my songs, "The Veteran of the Psychic Wars." They played at the live show. Yeah, that is that that that's such an honor, man. Yeah, those guys. Uh, they did do. Uh, they did a show here. I think in 1998 where they played uh, all the cover songs, nothing but cover songs. You know, in, in a theater. So, uh, but. Uh, yeah, they were. Yeah, they were just... yeah I, I took my son's a, a big. I, I, I changed his life. I think I bought a Master of Puppets on cassette when he was about twelve. No kidding. Yeah, and and now now he's in his forties. So I think that's why he's listening to all, all, <laughs> all, all uh, that outre uh, metal stuff now as as a as a man. Yeah. That, um. So, so Master of Puppets has to be one of the greatest metal albums ever, right? It, it's it's in the top ten for sure. You know, if not number one. You know, it's a great album. Wow. Well, Eric, thanks so much for the time. Royal Oak Music Theater, like I said, uh, Sunday, February 25th. Uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing you out there. Safe travels, and uh can hardly wait to hear in the Motor City eating Detroit-style pizza. Uh, yes, I'll be having a square somewhere. Where's the best place to go? <laughs> it's always buddies, right? But I'm sure there's a lot of places around Royal Oak that they can uh, point you in the right direction. Yeah, excellent. I'll be looking forward to it. Anybody that's a fan of Detroit-style pizza is okay in my books. As a matter of fact, I just had some pieces of a Detroit-style pizza I had last night. I love the, the corners, the crunchiness, and the goodness. Anyways, got to thank uh, Eric Bloom from BOC. Like I said, Royal Oak Music Theater coming up on Sunday, uh, February 25th. And um, 
Yeah, that Godzilla movie from last year, I didn't see it till like, I don't know, it was like December 28th or something. Um, somebody I know wanted to see it. I'm like, eh, I don't know. I mean, Godzilla, whatever. And man, it was uh, it was awesome. So if you get a chance to uh, check it out, especially in the theater, because of like what we were talking about, the uh, the 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 CGI and the, and the graphics stuff are just so good. So, anyways, give that a chance and uh, go check that out. In the meantime, BOC gonna be touring this summer. Cool, I'll take it. I've got some more hooks in the water as far as interviews are concerned. So, uh, check back, follow this podcast. Five star ratings are always appreciated. Uh, thank you so much for listening. We'll do it all over real soon with some more unique and different guests. Thank you for listening to Talk and Rock with Meltdown. You can help this podcast grow by giving it a five-star rating and writing a review on Apple and iTunes. Plus, feel free to subscribe and share it with your friends. Until next time, thanks for listening to Talk and Rock.